Hello again, and welcome back to my series on simple flies that I catch most of my trout on. I'm Raj Kletke, and today we'll be discussing, tying, and fishing the simple wrap dry fly. We've already tied this before in our series on fly fishing hatches under the part on blue winged olives, so you can review that also, but there are some minor changes. We'll be tying it again, emphasizing certain points that I feel make it a better fly. I use this fly predominantly to represent small mayflies, especially blue winged olives and trichos, but basically any mayfly that can be represented by a size 18 or smaller hook. I favor that it represents a late stage emerger with its shuck still attached, but if you feel what I'm calling a shuck is actually a tail, then the fly represents an adult done. It works for a single midge adult also. It's been a while since we've looked at Hewitt's factors for what features he felt were important to a trout. So before we tie our simple wrap, let's review these features as I think they are still valid today. So how do these apply to the simple wrap? Remember the points of light caused by the surface dimpling of this midge and the Griffith's gnat that we mentioned in the previous video? These are the main light effects of a surface fly and likely the first thing a trout sees at a distance on relatively flat water. I consider this a primary trigger. As the fly gets closer, some feel that the wing height is important as the wing tips enter the trout's window. The silhouette, in other words the size and shape, may be seen earlier by the trout if it is a low riding fly, or at least it becomes visible to the trout as the fly gets closer. The color is of minimal value when looking up on a bright day, and a similar quality of color is usually all that's really needed. However, we as trout fishermen prefer a color that resembles the natural, so we'll fish the correct color with a little more confidence. Let's take a closer look at the primary trigger, the light effect or the surface dimpling, whatever you want to call it. We're representing mayflies on the surface, and the mayfly's legs create points of light. The tail, when present, may stick up out of the water surface or occasionally add some dimpling also. A shuck will cause light effect, and the body will too if the mayfly is low riding, such as a lot of late stage emergers. Note how wide the legs actually spread. They're similar in spread to the body length. And note the size of the thorax. It may indent the surface more than the abdomen. Even midges of various species give surprisingly spread indentations. Many believe that trout look for primary and secondary features before striking, so it's nice to have these features in a fly. Unfortunately, we don't always know what these features are, and they may even be different for individual trout. So we often try to incorporate as many features as we can into our flies, but this can be a mistake, as some features seem to turn trout off, causing either no response to the fly or refusal, sometimes at the last moment as the trout splash next to your fly. The best advice I can give is to try to include what you feel are really important features, but keep it simple. Don't add complicating features that may cause refusals. This isn't always easy, but let's try tying a simple wrap fly and see if we can apply these principles. My simple wraps are small flies, commonly size 20 and smaller, but I will tie them in a size 18 also. I often use short shank hooks as they allow larger gaps with smaller bodies. I use large eye hooks in sizes under 18 as an accommodation to my age. With hooks as small, I use magnification, which makes tying much easier. If you're serious about tying trout flies, get a good lighting and magnification system. Here we're going to tie a size 18 hook so it can be more easily seen on this video, and I'm tying a blue wing olive, so I'll be using olive tying thread. Use the color that you want for the abdomen. For female trichos, I use olive. For male trichos, I use brown. For midges, I use black. I use zelon or hackle fibers in a cluster to represent the shuck of a late stage emerger. You could tie a straight or split tail if you want it to be a dun, or leave it off 
if you want it as an adult midge. However, failed emerging midges have shucks also, so I tie all my simple wraps with shucks. Most shucks are somewhat transparent, so I usually use a pale tan, a pale olive, brown, clear, or occasionally white, most commonly for all the mayflies and midges that I tie this fly for. Wind the thread forward, creating the skinny abdomen that these flies have. Don't add any additional dubbing to the abdomen for these small flies. Tie in an appropriate hackle at about the halfway point. This is a little further back than I used to use, but this gives a better spread and dimpling as this hackle will represent the legs as well as the wings of the fly. Seeing the hackle on the water is an important consideration for color, but for a blue wing olive, I use a gray hackle. For a trico, I use white. For a midge, I use black or occasionally white. On very small flies, some skip the thorax dubbing, but I don't, as the dubbing builds up the thorax, helps protect the wound hackle, allows more hackle fibers per wrap to flare, and indents the surface water like a mayfly thorax does. So, put a thin amount of dubbing on your tying thread. Most of the blue wing olives I fish have a grayish cast, so I use gray, but many blue wing olives have olive, gray, brown, or other color thoraces. Use the color of the flies you're, you'll be representing. For trichos and midges, I use black. I put one wrap of dubbing behind the hackle and then wrap the, hack, the dubbing forward to near the eye. Blue wing olives have prominent, fairly thick thoraces. Midges have relatively small thoraces. Trichos have very thick thoraces, usually about two millimeters wide on a size 20 hook. Wind the hackle forward then over the dubbing and tie off just behind the eye. Use enough wraps to start the hackles to flare. Again, remember how spread the legs on the naturals were. Cut off the excess hackle and wrap a small head before whip finishing the fly. This head may be slightly long and I should have taken one more wrap before tying it off, but before tying the hackle off, but don't crowd the eye or getting the tippet through the eye becomes difficult on these small flies. Since I believe this fly is a late stage emerger, it should ride low on the water, so I cut off the bottom hackles. If you're using the fly on riffles, you may want to leave the hackles full. I sometimes do this and cut the bottom of the hackle off later on the water with my tippet nipper if I'm going to be fishing flat water. As seen from the front, the horizontal fibers will indent the water like legs. The upright fibers represent the wing height. Incidentally, this could also function as a wound hackle spinner, even without clipping the upright fibers. When tied as a trico, it sometimes fishes both for the trico emergence and the trico spinner fall. It's also easier to see on the water with its upright wing than my poly wing spinner, the one that I use most commonly for a trico spinner fall. Well, now it's time to take the simple wrap fishing. This is a small dry fly made for fishing on relatively flat, quiet water. It can be used for searching, especially if midges or occasionally blue winged olives are on the water, but it is especially effective during or shortly after a hatch, especially a sparse hatch. It has some but very limited use on riffles. Behavior was only second to light effects in Hewitt's factors. For most mayflies, especially as a late stage emerger, this means that it should be fished dead drift with typical dry fly techniques. On quiet water during emergences, I prefer to fish this fly quartering downstream or across with reach casts to prevent lining the fish. On riffles, quartering upstream may occasionally be easier. Sometimes this fly may need to compete with numerous naturals, which can be very frustrating with any fly. Occasionally, very tiny movement may attract a trout's attention. This seems to work best for me when fishing midges. 
small movement hasn't worked well for me for fishing mayfly mayflies. I usually have a very difficult time fishing a heavy emergence of blue winged olives when many naturals are being ignored. I'm tempted to add a little flash, perhaps a little flashaboo to the shock or tail region, but so far I haven't tried that. I usually end up fishing with another fly for the heavy hatch situation. So join me next time when we'll tie another simple fly and try to fish it during a heavy blue-winged olive emergence. I'm Raj Kletke, and I'll see you soon.